Hi everyone, in today's lesson we're going to talk about end behavior and x and y intercepts of equations. Uh, before we can do that, we need to review a few vocabulary things first. Um, so first we need to review what the degree of a polynomial is. So the degree of a polynomial is the highest exponent in the equation, where the leading coefficient of the polynomial is the coefficient in front of the, vari in front of the variable that includes the degree of the polynomial. So here's an example of an equation, and if I want the degree, I'm just going to look for the highest exponent. So the highest exponent is 3, therefore I have a degree of 3. And if I want to find the leading coefficient, I'm just going to find the degree and look at the number in front. So the number in front is negative 4, therefore my leading coefficient is negative 4, LC for short. Okay, now the end behavior. The end behavior of any polynomial function mirrors that of these basic quadratic and cubic functions below. So just to recall what they look like, an x squared, basic x squared, goes to the origin and looks like this. A basic negative x squared goes to the origin and looks like that. It's upside down. A basic cubic function goes through the origin and looks like that and a basic negative cubic function goes to the origin and looks like that. So we can find the end behavior of any polynomial function if we know what these four pictures look like. So let's look at this example right here. We have n is an even degree. Notice the degree is positive and even. And the leading coefficient, the 3, is positive. So if I have a positive and an even power, what is it going to look like? So let's just draw a quick sketch. We know that our end behavior is going to go up, up. Now, notice how I didn't put anything in the middle because we don't know what this polynomial looks like. It could go through this way, it could go down like this, it could go like that. And as long as the two end pieces go up and up, just like these two pieces are, that's all we care about. So what is all this down here? This is how we write end behavior. So as the x-axis, or as x approaches infinity, we always say, as x approaches infinity, or as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, where is this graph headed? Or where's the y values headed? They are headed up to infinity. So that's what we say here. As x gets bigger and bigger, then so does f of x. Okay, now the second part to end behavior is as x approaches negative infinity. So as x approaches negative infinity, what happens to f of x? It shoots up again, so it goes to positive infinity. Okay, now let's talk about a different example. Here we have an even degree, but this time we have a negative leading coefficient. So let's just draw a sketch of what the end behavior will look like. Now this one is going to mirror this situation, where I have a negative leading coefficient and a positive even power. So I have an even power and a negative coefficient. My end behavior is going to go down, down. But again, we don't know what this polynomial looks like here. So it could go up, down, down, up. Well, it could go a few times. We don't, we don't know. But all we know is that the end behavior is going to go down, down, just like it does here. So as x approaches infinity, there's always two parts to it. As x approaches infinity and as x approaches negative infinity. So as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, where is this graph headed? You should be saying down, so it's going to negative infinity. Same thing here. As x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, as x approaches negative infinity, your f of x goes down, so it goes down to negative infinity. Okay, now let's look at the third example. So if n is an odd degree, so here's my degree is odd, here and here. And now let's look at this. If my leading coefficient is positive, so I have a positive 4, what is this going to look like? Well, this one is going to mirror this one. A positive x to the third, x to the third is my degree, and my positive coefficient is 1. So it's going to have end behavior like this and like this. So my graph is going to go up in this direction and then down in this direction. Again, we're not sure what this polynomial looks like. It could go back and forth a few times before going back up, but we know that my end behavior goes down and then up. So, again, end behavior has two parts. So as x goes to infinity, 
and as x goes to negative infinity. So as x goes bigger and bigger and bigger, where is y headed? You should be saying up, so it goes to infinity. As x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, where is the graph headed? You should be saying down, so that would be negative infinity. Okay, now the last and final example is when I have an odd degree but a negative coefficient. So what's that going to look like? Well, that one is going to mirror the end behavior of this one, where I have an odd degree and a leading coefficient that's negative. So it's going to go like this and like this. And again, we don't know what the inside is going to look like. It could very well be as simple as that. We don't know. But my end behavior is going to look like this and like this. And again, end behavior goes in two parts, as x goes to infinity and as x goes to negative infinity. So as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, y shoots down to a negative infinity. And then we have as x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, my y values shoot up. So as x approaches negative infinity, gets smaller, my f of x gets bigger, goes up. So every time you're doing end behavior, you should always write it in these two parts. And I know this was a little confusing, but if you have difficulty with it, please ask questions tomorrow. All right, let's move on to the next page. Okay, I'd like to talk about x and y intercepts. So I'm going to just draw a quick sketch of something. Here is a polynomial that I guess will have end behavior that is even degree and negative leading coefficient. Now let's see, maybe it goes like this, like this, and then like that, okay? So where are the x-intercepts? Well, this graph crosses the x-axis here, 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 and here. So we'll say, make up values for that, that this is 5, 0, this is 1, 0, negative 2, 0, and negative 5, 0. So what do you notice about all of the y values of all of these x-intercepts? You should be telling me all of these y values are zero. So that tells me an x-intercept will always occur when the y value is equal to zero. What do you think is going to happen when I have a y-intercept? So, well, let's just draw a quick sketch. Uh, we could have something that looks, I don't know, like this. And here is where it crosses the y-axis. So this point would be 0, negative 2. Uh, now, this one only has one y-intercept, but do you see the x-value? What is that x-value? The x-value is 0. So we're going to have a x-intercept when y is 0 and a y-intercept when x is 0. So if I want to find algebraically the x and y-intercepts of each equation, what we're going to have to do is set the correct value equal to zero. So when I get an x-intercept, y was equal to zero. And when I found a y-intercept, x was equal to zero. So let's do this first. So the first one, if I want to find an x-intercept, I'm going to set y, or f of x, equal to zero. Okay, so zero equals x squared minus 4x now please write minus 12. There was a typo here, so please make this a minus 12. And let's factor this. Let's see what we got here. So x minus 6, x plus 2. And we'll set each piece equal to 0. So x equals 6, and x equals negative 2. Now, all of these x and y intercepts must be written as points. So our answer is actually 6 comma 0 and negative 2 comma 0. Okay, now let's find the y-intercept. So for the y-intercept, I'm going to set x equal to 0. So y equals 0 squared minus 4 times 0 plus 12. So again, I start from the original. I just let this be y and these two pieces be zeros. And this one's actually pretty easy because all of this is 0, all that's 0. So the y-intercept is at 12. So we would just say it as a point, and the point would be 0, comma, 12. Okay, now let's do an x-intercept for number 2. So again, we're going to set y equal to 0, or f of x. So x to the 5th minus 16x. First step of factoring should be a GCF. So we're going to take out an x. We're left with x to the 4th minus 16. I think I can keep going. This looks like dots. 
And I actually think I can keep going a little bit more. So x plus 2, x minus 2. So this was dots, and this was dots. Okay, now I can set each of these pieces equal to 0. So this is x equals 0, x plus 2 equals 0. Solve that, you get negative 2. x minus 2 equals 0. Solve that, and you get 2. Now what about this one? x squared plus 4 equals 0. If you subtract 4, you get negative 4. And when you take the square root, you would get plus or minus 2i. Now, if I have an imaginary root, that means it doesn't cross the x-axis. So we're actually going to reject that one. That one doesn't even make any sense. Can't have imaginary. Imaginary never crosses. So if I wanted to write this as a point, this one's easy. It'd be 0, 0. This one would be negative 2, 0. And then this one would be 2, 0. And that's it. Okay, so now the y-intercept, we're going to set x equal to 0. So 0 to the 5th minus 16 times 0. And that was easy. That just came out to 0. So my y-intercept is the origin, 0, 0. Okay, we're going to practice a lot of this tomorrow in class. So if you have any questions, now's the time to jot them down. All right, we'll see you tomorrow.